If ever there was proof positive that children's television programmes were devised and written by people who are not entirely in possession of all of their faculties, it is In the Night Garden. In the Night Garden is a programme that even my own delightfully bonkers daughter Beth refused to watch when she was younger, on the grounds that it is just too weird. She is not wrong. For the uninitiated, let me attempt to describe what happens in your typical episode of In the Night Garden. It all starts innocuously enough. A small child is in a bed, falling asleep. Leaving aside the sinister connotations of a hairy man with a camera standing in the corner filming them falling asleep, this is pretty much the most normal part of the programme. They are falling asleep to dream lovely dreams. Unfortunately for the small child, this will not turn out to be the case. Instead, they will appear to now go on what looks like the worst acid trip this side of the 1980s. They are whisked away to Kew Gardens on crack and are introduced to a series of fucking idiots. First up, you have Iggle Piggle. Iggle Piggle is a little shit. One whose parents, should anyone actually admit to responsibility for him, have probably laughed off his behaviour as him being spirited and testing boundaries, as opposed to son of Satan and should be incarcerated. Iggle Piggle spends the entire fucking episode running around and causing havoc. At the end of each episode, after everyone else has calmed the fuck down and come down off their trip, he is still dicking around on a boat. Unfortunately for us, that boat is not the Titanic. Iggle Piggle's best friend is Upsy Daisy. Upsy Daisy, much like Iggle Piggle, also needs a good slap and a spell locked in the airing cupboard. She appears to get perpetually chased around the crack garden by her own bed. When they speak about the danger of illegal drugs, this is it. Maka Paka also lives in the garden. I swear, the names of every fecking character in the crack garden make Biff and Chip's parents look like positive traditionalists. Maka Paka collects stones and washes people's faces. A little like John the Baptist, if John the Baptist had in fact been stark raving bonkers. There are three Tombliboos, who look a little bit like Bjork on a really bad hair day. There are a handful of people in my life who I fantasise about trapping in a lift with the three Tombliboos until they break. The Tombliboos spend most of their time in the crack garden, perpetually getting on and off two modes of transportation, apparently called the Ninky Nonk and the Pinky Ponk. Those of us who haven't been on the gin since midday would more traditionally know them as a helicopter and a train. Southern rail strikes do not appear to have impacted on the crack garden. Elsewhere in the garden live two fucking huge families of very small people called the Pontipines and the Wattingers. The relationship between Mr and Mrs Pontipine and Mr and Mrs Wattinger is suspect to say the least, with them being perpetually in and out of each other's houses. There have certainly been bowls with car keys chucked into them over a few too many late night bottles of red wine at regular intervals over the years, and I don't think the exact parentage of any of those children can be guaranteed. Finally, you have a group of large inflatable objects with faces on called the Hahus, who float around the garden and get on people's tits, and some birds singing in the trees called Titifers, because who even knows why? I mean, Fair play to the creators of In the Night Garden. Can you imagine the balls it must have taken to go and pitch the above premise to the executives at CBeebies? So, we're going to take this to pitch, yeah? Great. I'm on characters, you're on narrative, yeah? What do you mean, fucking narrative? Well, there's got to be some kind of point to it, hasn't there? Have you seen Teletubbies? Yeah, valid point. Okay, so you think we just go along and wing it, yeah? Well, maybe we should have another couple of beers first. Two for the road, two for the pitch, and then I'll tell you what, my mum's mates with Derek Jacobi. I'll get her to pull a full few strings and get him to sign up to do the narrative for us. They'll be eaten out of our hands after that. What narrative? We haven't got a bloody narrative. Never stopped Love Island, did it? Valid. Another beer? Cheers.